There are two different theorems that we're going to look at in section 8.1. Today we're actually just going to focus on the law of sines, which is one of the two. Now the law of sines is a relationship between the sides and the angles of a triangle. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a generic triangle. Remember, an oblique triangle, not necessarily a right triangle. We'll label the sides alpha, beta, gamma, and then we'll label, or the angles alpha, beta, gamma, and we'll label the sides A, B, and C. And so the relationship we have is that the sine of alpha over A is equal to the sine of beta over B, which is equal to the sine of gamma over C. So this is it. That's the formula. Now, of course, the question is, well, where does that formula come from? Well, the idea to get the formula is that we're going to take our triangle. We're actually going to break it into two right triangles. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to think about what uh, relationships we can come up with based on the pictures that we have here. And so if we look at this triangle here on the left, we see it's a right triangle with this side being alpha. And if I just label this one right here H, we see that sine of alpha, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so H over B. Over on this side, we're going to have sine of beta equals H over A. And you'll notice that both of these have an H in it, so we can solve for the H. H is equal to B sine of alpha, and it's equal to A sine of beta. And so if we just focus on this equation right here, we can divide both sides by A times B to get sine of alpha over A is equal to sine of beta over B. So again, that's taking this equation, divide both sides by B times A, so the Bs would cancel out here, the As would cancel out over here, you leave B left with an A in the denominator on this side, <coughs> excuse me, and a B on the denominator on this side. So you can do this from any side. Remember that we drew the, when we draw our triangle, the base can be any of the sides. So in this case, I drew it this way, but again, this could be the base here, or this could be the base here. And in each case, we'll get the same sort of right triangle setup that you can use to solve for, um, solve a relationship between them to get this quantity, and that gives us the whole law of sines. Now when applying the law of sines, it's really, really important that you label things carefully. Uh, the most common mistakes I see with students is that they, they get a little bit lazy with the labeling, they label things wrong, and then all the calculations come out incorrectly. Um, and that's just not very good. Uh, the main idea, the main thing that we're going to be doing with this is that we're going to be solving triangles. Now this is a term that we've already heard. Solving triangles, what does that mean? This is determine, determine the angles and side lengths of a triangle. Side lengths of a triangle. And so in context, we were doing when we were doing this before, we were solving right triangles, but now we're going to solve these oblique triangles. And so we'll take a look at an example of, of, uh, of this. Example one from the book. In the triangle shown here, solve for the unknown sides and angle. <clears throat> so when I first work on these problems, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually label everything. Again, the reason why is because mislabeled um, parts end up making uh, leading to all sorts of errors. So remember that there's a correspondence between the angle and the side opposite of it. So if this is B, then this right here is going to be beta. Uh, this is C and that's gamma, that's fine. That makes this one obviously alpha and that A. Now again, this labeling, focus, there it goes. Uh, the reason why we labeled this way is to help make sure we don't make mistakes when we actually set up our equations because that's the most common place for them to happen. All right, so now we just have to think about triangles. What do we know about triangles? Uh, the first thing we know is about the angles. The angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And so here we have two of the angles. We should be able to solve for the third one. Gamma is 180 degrees minus those two angles, 50 degrees and 30 degrees, which turns out to be 100 degrees. All right, so now we have gamma. Uh, what I would tend to do for these problems is actually make a chart over here. A equals B equals C equals, alpha equals, beta equals, gamma equals. And the reason I do this is again, to, it's about organization more than anything else. 
So I know my gamma is that, I know my beta is 30 degrees, and I know that alpha is 50 degrees, and I also know that A is 10. Uh, this is, just, just lets me know what things, what information I have and what I still need to solve for. Again, it's really just organization. So that gives me this. Now, here you can see I still need to find B and C, and so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the law of sines. I'll write down the law of sines over here again. Sine of alpha over A equals sine of beta over B equals sine of gamma over C. And I didn't say this before, but you could also have the reciprocals of this, so it's A over sine alpha equals B over sine beta equals C over sine gamma. You could use either one of these. They're both the same, right? Just take reciprocals across the board. Uh, what I encourage students to do is to try to solve, set up these equations so that you solve in terms of values that were given to you in the problem. Uh, the reason why I do that is because if you use values that you have derived in the uh, process of solving the problem, it's possible you made a mistake there, and that mistake will then compound its way forward into the rest of your calculation. Whereas if you stick with values that were given in the problem, you sort of avoid that potential compounding error. And so for this one, let's say I wanted to solve for B. I need to pick parts of this equation, or at least set up this equation in a way that uses already known values. Now we don't, we started off knowing neither gamma nor C, so I basically want to ignore that and focus on the left-hand side. Sine of alpha over A equals sine of, oops, sine of beta over B. <clears throat> and now I can start plugging in my values. So sine of 50 degrees over 10 is equal to sine of 30 degrees over B. Solve for B, I multiply uh, both sides by B. Actually, we can do cross multiply, 10 sine 30 degrees. Uh, I'll write it out this first time, but I'm gonna trust that you have uh, a confident, uh, that you're confident enough in your algebra to be able to follow along with this. But basically what we can do with this is you get cross multiply B sine 50 degrees is equal to 10 sine 30 degrees. And so you have B is equal to 10 sine of 30 degrees over sine of 50 degrees. Now I'm going to leave it like this for now. I'll go back later with a calculator and calculate it, but I want to focus on this algebra stuff. Again, calculator stuff, I'm going to trust that you can do it. If we wanted to find uh, C, okay, well in this case we have no choice. We have to use our derived value. It happens sometimes, but again, it's really about trying to avoid it where you can. Uh, but instead of using B and uh, beta, I'm going to use the uh, A and alpha and again, that's because A and alpha are both known values given to me from the problem. So sine of alpha over A is equal to sine of gamma over C. Check my values out. Sine of 50 degrees over 10 is equal to sine of 100 degrees over C. So C is equal to 10 sine 100 degrees over sine of 50 degrees. And so at this point, that's me grabbing my calculator because I forgot to pull it out. So at this point, let's see if this shows up. Yeah, it looks like it shows up. All right. So at this point, we just need to uh, do the do the calculation. 10 times sine of 30 divided by sine of 50 is equal to B is equal to 37.6. Um, we'll do we'll do two decimals 0.66 over here C 10 times sine of 100 degrees divided by sine of 50 degrees is equal to 19.30 and so we have now solved for the triangle because we have all the sides and all the angles 